This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Despite the fact that conservative apologists all over the country, politicians and former politicians, are attempting to reframe the events of the insurrection on January 6th, despite all of that, it, it, the fact remains it was an unprecedented event in American history, a dangerous attempted overthrow of the United States government, an attempted coup, an insurrection, a violent one. We witnessed the loss of lives. And I'm going to do a couple stories today, starting with this one, about this. Because the FBI has released new video of um, a, a yet-to-be-solved part of the, the the day's events. And that is two pipe bombs were placed at different locations, some believe, to, to draw law enforcement resources away from the Capitol so that the violence could be more intense. So their objective of overthrowing the United States government, of overturning a free and fair election, could be accomplished. I'm going to read from this NPR article because this is an aspect of the events of January 6th that doesn't get a lot of coverage because it's unsolved, for one. But it needs to be talked about because this this aspect of it lends, lends, it lends more credibility to the fact that this was a coordinated event meant to, to um, achieve the objective of the coup, of violence, of overthrow, of infiltrating the United States Capitol with the objective of stopping the certification of the election. This isn't just some willy-nilly, oh, we'll just go put some bombs out. There was motive behind it. There were sinister machinations uh, behind the the specificity of where they placed these particular bombs that were viable. They weren't dummy bombs. They were viable explosive devices that luckily the, the, the person who constructed them didn't do it quite right reading from this NPR article, and then I'm going to play a video that was just released from the FBI soliciting your help of what you may know about the person in this video. Uh, From NPR, the FBI releases new video of the person who planted bombs before the Capitol riot. The FBI released new information on Wednesday on the person who left pipe bombs in Capitol Hill the night before hundreds of people stormed the United States Capitol building on January 6th. The new information includes a virtual map, which I will get to here in a minute, and clear surveillance video that shows the route the bomber walked while placing two devices on January 5th. Premeditated. They did it the night before so the bombs would be in place and they could get to the work of chaos. They could get to the work of anarchy. They could get to the work of insurrection and violence and overthrow of the United States government. Here is that video. Watch this. It is, there is no sound, so I'm going to talk over it, continue to read a little bit from this article. The virtual map depicts the approximate route an unknown suspect walked on January 5th, 2021, while placing two pipe bombs in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Washington, D.C. The map also features video of the suspect at various points along the route. The bomber planted the devices between 7.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. One device was placed in an alley behind the Republican National Committee headquarters. The other placed next to a park bench near the Democratic National Committee headquarters. You see, this was all part of their plan. Both are just blocks from the Capitol building. The FBI said Wednesday that investigators also believe that the bomber was operating out of the Folger Park area of Capitol Hill. It's also a location just blocks from the Capitol office buildings. The FBI says that based on the behavior in the video, they believe the bomber isn't from the area. 
the video recordings are very clear, the person's identity is not. And that is why they're seeking the public's help to find out who this is. The bomber wore a face mask, glasses, a gray hooded sweatshirt, gloves, and black and light gray Nike Air Max Speed turf shoes with a yellow logo. A backpack was used to transport each of the devices. The FBI is extremely grateful to the American people who have already provided us with vital assistance in this case, said Stephen M. Dentuono, assistant director in charge of the FBI's Washington field office. Since January, the FBI has conducted over 800 interviews, collected more than 23,000 video files, and assessed more than 300 tips related to this investigation. Those tips have helped us uncover new information, which we are releasing today and asking the public to view it and call us with any information you may think relevant. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives and the FBI are offering a $100,000 reward for information leading to the identification of the bomber. Quote, we know it is hard to report information about a friend or family member, but these pipe bombs were viable devices that could have detonated, causing innocent bystanders to be seriously injured or killed. Your tip could be the one that prevents this person from harming themselves or anyone else. This is important. It is important because of not just getting this person off the street and, and criminally prosecuting them for their, for their crime, but it is also important to piece together what else could have happened. This person was an integral part of the organization, the planning of what took place on January 6th. They have, they know the names. And if we are able to get um, this person in custody, then it could lead to a thread being pulled and many other people being brought into custody. We need to get to the bottom of this. This is why the select committee's investigation is so important. Uh, back to the article here. Investigators have arrested and charged hundreds of people who stormed the Capitol on January 6th, but the would-be bomber has yet to be captured. Their motive is unknown. But former U.S. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund testified before Congress that he believes the viable devices were planted as a possible diversion ahead of the events the following day. Quote, we were dealing with two pipe bombs that were specifically set off the edge of our perimeter to what I suspect draw resources away, he said at a congressional hearing. I think there was a significant coordination with this attack. The FBI is asking anyone with information to view the virtual map investigators created and come forward with information. Now, there will be a link to this video that you can review in the description of this video. You can also refer to what I just played. There was no sound in the video, so it's just mute me if that's what you need to do. Here's the wanted poster. I'm going to put a link to this wanted poster down in the description of this video. I would suggest that you share it widely on your social media. We need to turn, listen, we live in a country right now where some random Karen, some random asshole coughs all over people at a grocery store and we immediately know who they are. Granted, that dumbass lady didn't have her face covered. That's part of the point of the video. But if we can identify someone within moments of a viral video being posted, we should be able to get to the bottom of this using the ingenuity and the, the, the width and the breadth of, of who people know in this country. This should go viral. This FBI video should go viral. The description of this individual should go viral. This wanted poster from the FBI and the BATF should go viral. Make it happen. Share this video. If that's not, if you'd rather just share the, the individual evidence, do that. Put it on your Facebook. Put it on your Twitter. Share it to Reddit. Wherever else. 
We need to get to the bottom of this to prevent this from happening again. I'd love to know what you think. Are you down to spread the word? You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. You can connect with me on social media. Tag me when you share this. That would be fantastic. Let me signal boost your tweet. I would also appreciate it if you would consider supporting my work here on the platform. For as little as $2 a month, you can click the join button, become a channel member here on YouTube for $1.99 a month it starts. If I could marshal the size of my audience and get one or two or 3% of my audience to chip in and help produce my work, we could grow this operation into something unimaginable for me at this point. I appreciate your 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 consideration. Uh, if, if you're not a fan of the YouTube uh, channel member system, you can go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. That is also a fantastic way to help produce and support my work. I love you guys. I appreciate every single one of you spending a little time with me each day. I'll see you next time. And until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.